Welcome to installation and maintenance of health IT systems, troubleshooting, maintenance and upgrades, interaction with vendors, developers, and users. This is Lecture A. This component, installation and maintenance of health IT systems, covers fundamentals of selection, installation, and maintenance of typical electronic health records, EHR, systems. This unit, troubleshooting, maintenance and upgrades, interaction with vendors, developers, and users, will discuss ways you can implement an infrastructure for troubleshooting and maintaining EHRs and their existing infrastructure. Objectives for this unit, troubleshooting, maintenance and upgrades, interaction with vendors, developers, and users, are to identify and implement an effective troubleshooting procedure for reporting, evaluating, fixing, deploying, and follow-up of errors, problems, or limitations for the system. Integrate downtime schedule for OS, network, database, and client application maintenance and updates. Creating an infrastructure that will be able to troubleshoot technical performance issues adequately and quickly is imperative to ensure successful workplace integration, maximum reliability, and to minimize downtime. Nowhere is this need more apparent than in the healthcare setting, whose dependence on its computer systems in recent years has increased exponentially, and where computer delays can jeopardize the health of patients. As an institution's size grows, this task becomes daunting as user issues, upgrade projects, and routine system maintenance all vie for the IT staff's time. This section is designed to offer some suggestions for effectively managing these issues and to offer some proven diagnosis and management strategies. Today, we will discuss creating a help desk, triaging and prioritizing trouble calls, and creating a tiered support strategy, especially for larger environments. Additional objectives for this unit, troubleshooting, maintenance and upgrades, interaction with vendors, developers, and users are to develop a process for communicating requirements and supplying updates between vendors, developers, and users. Create a baseline for system performance measurement and comparison for troubleshooting. In the second part of our lecture, we will shift gears a bit to discuss troubleshooting, maintenance, and upgrade strategies. We will discuss the importance of creating a baseline for measuring system performance. What is a baseline? What to measure? Finally, we will talk about interactions between vendors, developers, and users and the importance of developing a process for communicating requirements and supplying updates. We will briefly discuss the importance of client-vendor relationships and offer some suggestions for ensuring a healthy and long life together. Even if your clinic or institution has their EHR system installation well underway and you've experienced no real issues, you must accept the fact that problems will eventually arise, often during implementation or even after the implementation process has been completed. Users will look to their HIT consultant to help them develop procedures for reporting problems and methods of monitoring the system's performance. You will need to decide how IT-related issues can best be resolved based on the size and purpose of the organization, budgetary constraints, and staffing resources you have available. EHR and IT support staff, in concert with your EHR vendor, are typically responsible for resolving these issues as they arise. Your IT support may be hired and developed in-house, or you may choose to contract or outsource with a third party to provide support on an as-needed basis. If you choose to develop an in-house staff to provide partial or full technical support for your EHR system, there are a number of different organizational staffing models to choose from, depending upon your particular institutional needs and support responsibilities. For larger institutions, the chore of maintaining a large EHR infrastructure combined with the need to interface with perhaps hundreds of users on a daily basis becomes a more daunting and costly task, typically requiring an additional in-house IT staffing component, often referred to as the development team, to maintain and further develop the system. The temptation is always there to share the production support responsibilities with the development team, this is particularly prevalent in mid-sized organizations where IT teams are in-house but may be smaller, forcing them to share the workload.
This practice, however, often leads to productivity loss and long-term team dissatisfaction as project goals fall further and further behind schedule, necessitating the creation of a dedicated production support team to manage customer support issues. The production support team should provide highly available, highly usable, and expedient support to address user service issues as they arise. In today's healthcare environments, EHR downtime can potentially have a negative effect on patient outcomes. This means ensuring access to skilled IT support during all operational hours and devising an efficient method of ensuring user requests are processed and resolved in a timely manner to minimize productivity loss. And any patient safety issues, responsibilities of the support team could include managing user access to the EHR system and monitoring the daily interface errors and discrepancies, such as invalid interface filing types, patient mismatches, and duplicate orders. The production support team should also be highly customer focused. This is especially true in healthcare environments where medical professionals are often working under stressful conditions and may be sensitive about being placed in subordinate roles. Your frontline support team should be able to use their soft skills to better understand and build good working relationships with their users while effectively addressing their technical needs. Your support team should be versatile, encompassing specialists in help desk, application level, hardware, and network support. And have a thorough understanding of application and business processes. As your organization grows, it's more common to compartmentalize, depending on each skill set required to address a particular issue. Let's take a closer look at one such method we could use. This diagram depicts a typical troubleshooting request workflow. As requests enter the system, they are evaluated by the help desk. If the help desk cannot resolve the issue immediately, the request is triaged, assigned a priority, and directed to the appropriate workgroup for resolution. This system provides the support team with an efficient workflow strategy designed to adequately address user needs. In this instance, the IT team is divided into five support categories: one, the help desk, who would triage incoming requests and process basic diagnosis and administrative requests. Two, the applications team, who respond to issues surrounding the use of various supported software applications, including EHR software issues and including trouble diagnosis and software upgrading. Three, the networking team, who diagnose and resolve issues regarding connectivity and data exchange, general administrative, security, and account issues, and perhaps some server administration and hardware support issues. Four. The Citrix team, who would resolve issues arising from the use of supported virtual environments, and five, the workstation support team, who would respond to inquiries regarding workstation usage, including potential hardware malfunctions or local application support installation and troubleshooting. It's important to note that this is just one variation of a support organization. Each IT department must find the balance between workload and available resources that best suits their organizational needs. In larger organizations, which often need to support multiple clinic sites, a tiered troubleshooting support approach is recommended to maximize IT support productivity while maintaining a high degree of customer service response. In these instances, a three-tiered approach is often most effective. The first tier, consisting of super users and/or help desk staff, the second tier is staffed with workstation and networking specialists, and technical analysts are deployed to troubleshoot issues not resolved by the first tier's efforts. The third tier is usually made up of application support specialists and support consultants. They are usually centrally located, which facilitates the face-to-face -face communication often needed to root out complex performance issues. Now let's talk about the different tiers in more detail. So-called super users are usually members of clinical teams who are well versed in EHR usage and have received additional training in workflow strategies. They are strategically located at practice sites or departments to provide frontline user support to commonly asked questions and to promote proper security and confidentiality practices. Super users should be excellent teachers who enjoy the person-to-person -person interaction required to answer many user inquiries, and oftentimes serve as liaisons between the EHR support team and the clinic.
Super users are also good at identifying problematic EHR and workflow issues and recommending potential improvements to the development team for consideration. The Help Desk. Regardless of the size of your organization, it's important that all incoming requests be handled efficiently and are properly prioritized, which we'll discuss momentarily. The Help Desk should become the centralized first point of contact for most user inquiries. The Help Desk is responsible for troubleshooting and resolving most common issues and assisting users with typical EHR usage inquiries, often through phone and email support. When a problem arises that is beyond the scope of the Help Desk to resolve, they will prioritize the issue, triage it, and assign it to the appropriate group for resolution. Help Desk staff also have the responsibility of documenting their work cases. Each call or support request should be tracked using a ticketing system, such as Remedy, Cerberus, or Land Desk, to ensure proper documentation and timely service. Since an overwhelming majority of work requests will be funneled through the help desk at some point, thorough documentation of these work cases can, when analyzed, provide additional insight into trends and performance issues affecting the EHR system. Help desk staff should have excellent customer relations skills and be effective at triaging and assigning requests. They should have intermediate level workstation and peripheral troubleshooting skills and be proficient at supporting the various workplace applications. Network specialists and workstation analysts have general network knowledge and proficiency with all supported utility applications. They typically are dispersed throughout the system to provide level 2 support and know who to contact when problems arise to expedite repairs. They are oftentimes assigned to a particular work group and are dispatched by the help desk to meet with an end user to provide in-depth training or further triage an issue and attempt a resolution. Application support analysts and production support consultants represent the third tier in troubleshooting. In organizations with smaller budgets, these may also be part of the development team. Application support specialists provide expert support for EHR applications, including troubleshooting unique problems and interfacing with the vendor to find resolutions. Production support consultants are lead system analysts. In addition to performing roles similar to application support specialists, they are responsible for training other analysts, as well as researching, recommending, and implementing EHR system upgrades. When separate teams are responsible for projects and production support, it becomes even more critical to produce vital written documentation and build other, more efficient means of communicating change across the IT teams. Periodic training sessions are also helpful for distributing latest enhancements or known issues to other team members. The ability to become a skilled listener and be able to accurately define the problem are important communication skills when interfacing with users. Often, the user is simply describing an EHR enhancement request rather than an actual problem with the system. This makes the support team a valuable asset for gleaning enhancement ideas. As we touched on earlier, prioritizing requests properly is key to maximizing user productivity and minimizing adverse patient outcomes, and is initially done when a request comes into the help desk. Requests should always be prioritized based upon the level of impact. Here is a suggested four-level prioritization scheme. A routine or low-priority request is limited to an intermittent problem that needs addressing but is having no impact on workflow or patient care. An important or medium priority request indicates that a device is non-functional but not impacting patient care. An urgent or high priority request is an issue that is severely impacting an individual's or department's workflow. Critical status is reserved for issues where a critical device is affected with no other alternative for the user or the issue is directly affecting a patient's care. Despite the fact that almost 50% of the practicing physicians in the U.S. work in healthcare settings staffed with five or fewer physicians and the recently imposed governmental incentives for EHR usage, these smaller clinics continue to lag behind in EHR system adoption. Stakeholders in these settings often cite lack of sufficient financing, technical staffing resources, and knowledge of best practices as reasons for delaying adoption. Their concerns are justified since the high cost of starting an EHR is typically only partially offset, even with current incentives in place. 
Additionally, it said that the annual cost of maintaining an enterprise EHR system once in place can be up to four times the initial cost of the original purchase. For smaller environments, this may mean outsourcing with an IT consultant or team and appointing an in-house go-to person with at least some technical proficiency who can perform administrative functions on the system and to interface with the consultant and the vendor when problems beyond the typical scope arise or when updates are ready for deployment. Many vendors offer support packages to accommodate these smaller healthcare settings. It's important that you understand the amount of support your potential EHR vendor is willing to provide, and how much on an annual basis you can expect to pay. Some clinics affiliated with larger hospitals or IPAs have the option of receiving technical support from these entities in order to offset in-house technical support or letting them host the EHR system altogether. Thanks to cloud computing, hosted solutions offer a big advantage where maintenance cost is a significant issue, since much of the burden of maintenance and repair falls to the EHR vendor, who in many cases provides 24-hour support for their system. Some smaller practices are beginning to bring health information management professionals on staff to assist with documenting and assessing workflow, EHR integration, and assisting with coding and data management. Lastly, whether you plan to work in a large or small environment, be sure to take full advantage of training opportunities as they come along for your particular EHR system. Most vendors offer extensive EHR software training, usually for a fee, at their corporate sites or through an online training package. This concludes Lecture A of Troubleshooting, Maintenance, and Upgrades: Interaction with Vendors, Developers, and Users. Well, that's a good start for this unit. Let's take a minute to summarize what we've learned so far. Smaller healthcare settings may get by contracting with a third-party IT contractor or through their EHR vendor for a majority of their technology and EHR needs, while larger institutions will most likely require a dedicated in-house IT staff to provide efficient response to resolve system issues and user requests. Being able to triage and prioritize requests as they are received helps to ensure urgent issues are not overlooked. Also, ensure that requests are forwarded to the appropriate specialist for resolution. Slide 20. There are a variety of ways an IT department can structure itself to best meet the needs of its users. For larger institutions, however, a tiered approach can be quite effective at managing workloads and mitigating issues when they arise. Lastly, effective IT departments employ specialists with a wide variety of skill sets, including application support and development, networking infrastructure and security, and hardware support, to better serve their customers without frequently depending on third-party resources. In Lecture B, we will begin to discuss specific strategies for troubleshooting, as well as upgrading and maintenance. We'll also discuss the importance of the client-vendor relationship when it comes to technology issues, as well as strategies for interfacing with users.